How's it going everyone? The PlayStation Store is running its Critics' Choice sale, so a relatively mixed reception to the sale, and I can definitely understand why a lot of the prices are still pretty high. However, there are some deals that stood out to me, a lot of repeat deals, some uh, titles I would definitely recommend though, and we're going to be looking at games under $20, so we'll keep your budget in mind. Now, we're not going to like dip below under $10. Uh, we might do another video looking at games under $10. I did notice a couple things like Hollow Knight Void Heart Edition, definitely that's one of the best deals. A part of the sale but we might talk that another time so let's get right into it we got 10 games to go over so let us start metro saga bundle is the first one that i do want to recommend this is at 17.99 you get metro 2033 redux metro last light redux and metro exodus gold edition that is including all the dlc 18 dollars for that i would say is quite good now metro and metro last light that bundle does usually go on sale for like five bucks so you're really the majority of the price is coming from metro exodus's gold edition but that still goes for a hefty price even on sale um you know you're paying around 10 to 15 bucks at least so overall the price is fairly good and as far as metro as a franchise i think it's tremendous it's one of the more atmospheric first person shooters that you're going to get into obviously it is a single player fps only so keep that in mind but great ambiance, great theme, very good story here. You're really going into this with story in mind because that's one of the strongest components of the game. The gameplay solid. I enjoyed all three games quite a bit, and uh, Exodus being the gold edition definitely does add to the value. If it was Exodus the regular edition, I would probably skip out on this, but the fact that it is the gold edition, definitely a worthwhile buy. And uh, Exodus runs really well on the PS5. They just upgraded that. Well, not just upgraded it. The upgrade's been out for a little bit, but uh, it runs really well on the PS5, so that should be noted as well. Next up, you guys know all my JRPG fans out there, The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is down 50% to 1999. Whenever Cold, uh, Cold Steel goes on sale, I gotta give it a recommendation just because it is a phenomenal franchise of JRPGs. Legend of Heroes as a whole is one of the deepest JRPG franchises you can get into. Now, there's a lot of debate. Should you start with Trails of Cold Steel right away? Should you play the other games? Well, the other games, some of them aren't available readily to uh, all of you guys. Like, Yes, you can find patch versions, and they are eventually bringing uh, tr the other Trails titles over here, and they're going to be on uh, PS4, but nobody trying to wait that long, and Trails of Cold Steel, you can jump in and have a great time with it. These games are lengthy, and Trails of Cold Steel, the first game, it should be noted, it is a lot of setting the table, introducing you to the characters, and, uh, you know, a lot of backdrop, but that's not a bad thing. The setting the table portion of this game is actually really good, and then by, you know, halfway, 60-70% in, uh, things really start picking picking up and then I should also mention Trails of Cold Steel 2 is on sale and when you get into that game it's just you know it's gangbusters all the way through um you know yeah, people have their opinion on what happens in Cold Steel 3 and 4 but hey uh I enjoyed those games as well but Cold Steel 1, tremendous, and it's a lot of content for your dollars, so definitely a worthwhile pickup. Next up, we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is down to $13.99. It should be noted, if you do have EA Play, you can play it that way as well. Um, I don't believe the EA Play deal is still available three months for like five bucks or whatever, but... $14 for Jedi Fallen Order is quite good. Obviously, Jedi Fallen Order 2 should be getting its reveal within the next few months. And uh, Jedi Fallen Order 1, I thought, was a really solid a solid game. I thought the voice acting was good. I thought the story was fairly solid. I thought the combat was fairly good as well. I've talked about how much I hate the map in the game enough, but uh, overall, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives for me in this game. And another game, if you're playing on PS5, very much upgraded and much better. You'll enjoy it for its performance upgrades and whatnot on PS5. 14 bucks, good price on that. Next up, we have Doom Eternal, the standard edition, which is 1979. I could definitely see the argument of people thinking this is a little bit overpriced just because when did it come out? Like back in early 2020. So we're coming up on two years since the release of this game. So yeah, maybe 1979 is a little bit expensive, but it's such a great first person shooter, visceral, fast paced, gory, uh, and it's got a lengthy single player campaign. I think it's a worthwhile purchase to get into. Yeah, does it give you the content offering of like a Trails of Cold Steel in terms of hours of gameplay? No, not necessarily, but Doom Eternal is still a very, very enjoyable game. And again, if you want visceral, fast paced action, it's a great pickup. I wasn't completely high on the multiplayer component, but the single player campaign is excellent and if you want to play on the hardest difficulty, yeah, that'll take you a little bit longer as well. 1979, I do think, is a good pickup. Hopefully, uh, if you don't pick it up now, hopefully at some point we get the Deluxe Edition much cheaper. That would be quite nice because uh, Ancient Gods Part 1 and Part 2 are available as standalone purchases, and they're 20 bucks a pop, so that's a little bit pricey. 
All right, next up, we have the Resident Evil 2 Remake, 60% off for $15.99. This has kind of settled into that $16 price threshold for a while. Uh, it doesn't get much cheaper than that digitally. I don't think it's ever gotten cheaper than that, actually. Nonetheless, it is a great pickup. Uh, Resident Evil 2 is one of the better remakes that you're going to see. Uh, it stays true to the original while also bringing it up to speed for a modern audience. And uh, much better than the Resident Evil 3 remake. And I like the RE3 remake, uh, RE3 remake a lot more than most people. But it's easy to see the RE2 remake is where it's at. They did a great, great job with this. And definitely go pick it up, especially if you've enjoyed some of Capcom's recent Resident Evil offerings. You'll have a kick out of Resident Evil 2. Yeah, not super lengthy, but definitely quality uh, over quantity here. And 16 bucks, a solid pickup here. Next up, Outer World, 67% off for $19.79. Yeah, I know, uh, Obsidian now is owned by Microsoft, and we're not going to be getting Outer Worlds 2 on uh, PlayStation. You know, go pick up a Xbox if you want to play that when it does drop, but Outer Worlds 1 is still very much worthwhile a playthrough. Pretty good story here. Really like the setting and the themes to this game. Decent amount of decision-making as well. A game that I thought was relatively replayable on top of that, and it wasn't a super lengthy RPG. Like, I know some people, when they get into RPGs, they find it a little bit daunting how lengthy they are. But this isn't a game I don't think most people are going to be spending, you know, north of 80 to 100 hours on. You can kind of get in, get out, probably beat it within a week, week and a half if you're playing it consistently. And uh, I thought it was a fairly good game. And, uh, you know, I know it's a bummer Outer Worlds 2 isn't going to be on any PlayStation platforms. But uh, the first one's still worthwhile to play through. And uh, hopefully we'll get the... Um, the board approved bundle is what they call it that has the expansion pass hopefully that goes on sale same thing with doom and that and doom also bethesda now owns uh bethesda is now owned by microsoft so kind of interesting but uh yeah hopefully that um the board approved bundle goes on sale at some point because, uh, because the expansion pass is not included with this and i think that's like 20 bucks or something like that the dlc is on sale so you can check it out but it's only 20 percent off on each of them so not a steep discount there. All right, next up, we got Bloodborne, the Complete Edition Bundle. $17.49, this includes Bloodborne as well as the DLC, which is definitely a nice inclusion. Now, uh... Bloodborne is a game that hopefully we'll see a PlayStation 5 upgrade at some point because this game would be so much benefited by a 60 frames per second uh, upgrade. I mean, I can say that about any game, but with Souls titles, I think it's doubly so. Uh, $17.49 might seem a little bit expensive. However, uh, that DLC content, uh, the bundle doesn't ever go below $17.49, at least from my recollection. Maybe it's gone down to like $16, bucks, but it doesn't go below $17.49 often. Bloodborne is such an excellent game that I highly recommend everybody to try it out look i've made it you know pretty abundantly clear that i'm not huge on the souls games like some other people like i again i play all of them i enjoy them but uh bloodborne was the one that really stuck out to me i love the setting i love the environment the visuals were stunning yes the frame rate isn't ideal at this stage of the game but i think for all the quality bloodborne does have um you know the positives definitely outweigh that one negative love the combat in here and i again love the thematics the soundtrack the presentation i thought those elements were incredibly strong in this game so 1749 for that i think is quite good next up we have immortals phoenix rising which is 75 percent off for 14.99 i believe this is the cheapest the game has been on the playstation store now this game has an unfortunate story where it came out like december of i want to say 2020 and seemingly didn't do all too well from a sale standpoint because it went on sale very very quickly um you know at that point even exceedingly quicker than ubisoft games typically go on sale however it was an incredibly colorful and vibrant open world game decent gameplay here decent story and uh it was done by people i believe that worked on assassin's creed odyssey i believe it was done by the same studio so you knew they were familiar with open world games and they did deliver a quality game here. It just didn't seemingly resonate from a sales standpoint, but um, critically it did fairly well. It got pretty solid reviews. I think it has like an 80 something on Metacritic, a 79 on Open Critic, so that's not a bad score. And 15 bucks is definitely a good price. I could understand why new IP, another open world game, maybe 60 bucks was a little bit of a deterrent, but at 15, I think it's a worthwhile pickup. Go check it out. People want Ubisoft to make new IPs and they tried one with Morals. It's unfortunate that it didn't really click for a a lot of people next up sakura wars is 70 percent off for 17.99 now it must be made abundantly clear this is not a jrpg that you get into if you are not familiar with jrpgs if you haven't played a lot of them this game is for more hardcore jrpg fans because it really does fall into a lot of tropes there are a lot of tropes the dialogue at times can be cringeworthy for some people and i can understand somebody that predominantly plays western titles getting buying sakura wars and they are just going to be 
completely turned off based on some of the dialogue. However, uh, the character interactions can be colorful at times and they can be engaging. And the gameplay itself is actually pretty decent. You've got a good story in here. You've got a deep cast of characters and definitely not a game worth spending $60 on. But at $18, if you're looking for another JRPG to play that's a little bit bubbly, a little bit colorful, I think Sakura Wars is a fairly good pickup. And again, if you're like a hardcore anime fan, I think you'll recognize a lot of the tropes here as well. So that should be noted. Lastly, I do want to give a shout to Super Giant Games' Hades, 25% off for $18.70. Very easy recommendation here. Super Giant Games, while I'm always going to be partial towards Bastion, that's a game that I just got when I was super young and I absolutely adored it. I think if you assess it from a mechanical standpoint and story and all the fundamental elements that make a high quality game, Hades is their best outing thus far. And that says a lot because their previous three were quite good, but there's a reason why Hades won so many Game of the Year awards. It is a game that is exceedingly replayable. The art style is absolutely gorgeous and much like Bastion and maybe even more so, it's going to age tremendously well. Like I think a decade from now, people are still going to say, wow, Hades is an incredibly good looking game just because of the aesthetic style. And that really can be said for a lot of super giant titles. Uh, a game that a lot of people have sunk a ton of hours into. I have friends that have sunk, you know, north of 100, 120 hours into the game. It's just a game that's very replayable, very addicting. 1874 might seem expensive given that it's just a 25% off discount, but the game is at such a high quality that uh, it's easy to recommend. You know, I often look at Dead Cells as a game that for a long time, it wouldn't see a significant discount, but the game is at such a high quality level that it's just easy to recommend just because of the, you know, the tier that it's in as far as the game is concerned the same thing can be said for hades 1874 is still a great buy for it so that's gonna do it for me again deals under 20 dollars links in the description box below as always thank you for watching sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.